Welcome everyone to a, the Northern Affinity video podcast. So I'm Michael Edwards. I am the founder of the Northern Affinity. Um, thank you very much for, for joining today's discussion. Uh, well, we'll go to our expert that we are speaking to very, very soon. Um, but I just want to give you an update on what the purpose of this conversation is. So for, for me, there's twofold, really. Firstly, it's for you and I to learn, to learn something from the person that we are speaking to, to, to get new ideas, to stimulate thought. That's, that's a great start for me. But secondly, for me, which is a big passion of mine, is to give a platform to the person I'm speaking to. It's an opportunity for really, really good people who are doing really, really good things to demonstrate that and for you to hopefully see that. So, and now that the kind of overall, all our uh, contributors are these type of people, are small business owners, people are doing things for good. So please, if you could follow and subscribe, whether you're watching this as a video on YouTube or you're listening via your various podcast platforms, please do subscribe. Listen to our other contributors. There's been some fantastic discussions we've had in the past, and I'm sure we will have in the future. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm delighted to say now the video podcast is sponsored by Leeds Becky University and their Help to Grow Management Training Program. Um, if you have a business, an SME that has between five and 250 employees um, and you're looking at something to help you, you and your business grow, I would advise looking at this. It's 90% funded. It's a fantastic opportunity for so many people. The programs are open now, so please do check it out and I'll put all the details in the show notes. Enjoy the discussion. Welcome to the latest edition of the, the video podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to say I'm joined by Mag. So welcome, Mag. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, morning. This is a great way to start the week, Michael. <laughs> oh, yes. Obviously, this will be going out. I'm sure quite well. It'll be going out. But we're recording this 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. So we're really bright and ready to go out. Very breezy. But, uh... Only one coffee. So we're going to be absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this morning, we're going to talk about... Um, planning your marketing for for micro businesses specifically actually um but before we kind of jump into that mag do you want to kind of just give a quick introduction to you and maybe to obviously your business for people who are watching on the video you can see a big, big button behind mag's head as well so I could probably explain that that'd be a good good thing to, to start with <laughs> brilliant hi good morning hello everyone uh, my name is mags bradshaw um and i'm the founder and md of my marketing button uh, business absolutely driven by experience and passion and some huge dedication to the amazing process of marketing. Um, but what we are is um, we're an online platform. So we are giving micro businesses, small companies, an online kind of agile and very accessible and definitely affordable um, framework for a marketing plan and just such a vital part for, for any business, you know. So we're delighted to to provide that online solution. So that's who we are, and that's kind of what we're about. But I'm looking forward to today's chat because we're going to be lifting the lid, I think. We're going to be unpicking that button a bit, aren't we, Michael? <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll give, we'll definitely give it a go. Um, and and, and I, I love the branding, actually. I love the, I love the fact that it's, it's memorable, which is part of the battle, isn't it, with these things? And yeah. um, I'm sure people watching, like I said, the people watching this, will the big red button, it will remind you. Mm -hmm. And I know when, whenever I see your stuff pop up on the various social media channels, it, it stands out to me because because I, I recognise it and it's, it's, it's different. Yeah, great. Thank you. My mum will be pleased you said that, actually, Michael, because okay. whilst we are 100% today going to be talking about teach me how micro business plans their marketing, a um, million percent, but, you know, um, there is a backstory. And just very, very quickly, I will kind of say, because it isn't just because I'm like buttons, although I love <laughs> them a lot more now. Um, <laughs> um, but actually, the meaning for the button, um, it is... 100% what I kind of believe in. I think if I, I, my business is built on what I've done and what I genuinely am passionate about, and it is about connecting things and displaying marketing as a, a process that is built around relationships and connections. Um, and when I kind of sat back and was going to start my business, I thought, well, what do I believe in? What am I, I can only be authentic. I can only do what I feel and believe. Um, so I do some, drew some lines, drew some circles. And when I put it all together into a big circle around it, I thought that looks like a button. Um, and that works. But actually, as well, really, if you think about it, marketing is a cracking business process that brings so much together and actually needs to lead a business. 
Um, it needs to be at the front, hold things together. So it's that lovely, and I love analogies, but it's the analogy of it's got to stay in place. And who's keeping it in place? You know, so who's at the front holding that marketing button and making sure that everything comes together? Um, and just about my mum, quick shout out to my mother there. But when I left home, because I can't sew, this is the joke. I, I actually can't sew very well at all. I did a patchwork quilt once and it just looked a nightmare. Um, but my mum said, in this life, it's okay if you can't sew, but as long as you can sew a button on, you'll be okay. And she told me that about 20 years ago. <laughs> so, there's an irony. There is an irony. Um, but that's why it's a button. So you mentioned the branding. So I'm just sort of saying that there is some degree of logic um, there. So, yeah. And I love the fact that it's got a story and it's got a reason. And, it, and it, it, I think that's great. And it's like I said, it's memorable for, for yeah. I know I do, and I when I and I recognise it when it, when when I see it pop up, so that that's good. good. Um, good. So micro micro business plan and, and mm. marketing. I I guess the first question for me is, and it, I think probably most people listening or watching probably know the answer themselves to this, but I think it's good to kind of start the conversation. Is why does it matter? Why do we need? Why does you know I'm a micro business? Why do I need a plan? Why do why I do need you... to plan my marketing? I think do you know what I I'd like to drill it back to the absolute fundamental of. You set out with a business with a purpose. You set out with a vision to do something. So to me, the only way that's going to come to life, and that's the only way that's going to happen, is if we plan for it. I think if we, no matter what size of business you are, and I always think that, you know, marketing plans, are, and sometimes people use the word marketing strategy, and there's a lot of terminology. It's not just for big PLCs, you know. In fact, I think it's those small companies, those owner-led businesses They've been set up by someone with a vision. They need to plan for their success. And the very process that exists in any business that is the success process um, is marketing. So to me, you need to plan for it. <laughs> 100%. And I think it's really interesting. It's very relevant for kind of things I'm working on personally at the moment is the planning is I think there's obviously a plan that when you first start that needs to go into things. Um but also, I think one of the things about when you first start is things move quickly and agile, mm. and you have to be, to an extent, probably more reactive than proactive. To an, you just have to, you you just try yeah. things and go for it. But I think as you go through the journey, I um, mean, you know, I'm I'm coming towards four years in now. I think the planning actually becomes more relevant because it it is actually based on something. Yeah, you've got, you've got some kind of backstory. So I, I think it's almost counterintuitive that it feels like. Actually, the plan should you do more planning at the start. I actually think it's the other way around. I think should, as you move through the stages, you should do more planning because, in reality, the planning is probably going to or uh, it's going to be more accurate because you have more evidence of why why you're doing that plan. Does that make sense? Yeah, and actually, I think that's a really good point. Actually, I think that's a great question or a question and statement and everything. Actually, there, Michael, that was brilliant because that's that is exactly the reason why our business is a framework for a plan, right? Because we can't rock out and go, hey, Mr. New Business, you need to do this Monday, that Tuesday, that Wednesday, this Thursday. Because, A, you know, you know your business better than anyone. And I think what we are all about is saying, look, Michael, this is your business. You know your business better than anyone. You've got your knowledge and your expertise. And I think that goes for every small business owner. They have got their knowledge in what they do interesting that often people go oh no 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 I can't have a marketing plan I'm not a marketing person I don't understand I just I'm a I'm a butcher you know I'm not a marketing person we want to go hey look you d what do you think you need to know to have a marketing plan it's like interesting that perception I think there's a lot of misperception if that's the right phrase around marketing and planning and this is why people often put it off so I think there is an issue there definitely which I'd like to feel we're tackling because we're coming at this with a framework that's loaded with some structure to show and some knowledge to show people that they can get going. You know, I think that's key. But picking up on what you said, I think this is really interesting about you plan more when you've got the back because you've got to get the you've got to get the stuff to then to get going to yeah. then plan more. You know, so it depends what that people's thoughts and perceptions are around how they get started. And I think if you just can have that head start and have a bit of a a track to follow with some outcomes that can be achieved. And I think this is where we, and then you can start building into that because our take on a marketing plan is so much about knowledge and insights 
And it's just, it's kind of all those phrases about getting your ducks in a line, getting everything in in the right order. Um, as I think Morgan and Wise once said, it's all the right notes in the wrong order. I think for us, it's about getting the right knowledge in the right place to start with. And for example, the reason we introduce that as a, as a way a micro business can look to create a plan is by putting their knowledge into four key areas to start with. Understanding some outcomes they could be looking to achieve and that is that, like you said, is that motivation then to get going. It's offering some way to be able to start moving, seeing the marketing in your micro business, not feeling like it's something you can't have because you think that's not your area of expertise. And then the big word we love is confidence. <laughs> I love the word confidence because you're going to know your business. It, it always strikes me as like quite amazing that people start a business because they're experts or passionate or they know their thing, then all of a sudden, oh my God, I don't know anything about marketing. No, 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 no. It's your business you need to know about. <laughs> it's what you do. <laughs> and when you then see how you can be achieving great marketing outcomes and you've got a plan and you're motoring, that confidence around how marketing looks for you, you're, that grows. And then that's how you build into it. So you're right. You then feel you're underway and you can then embrace that plan even more. And when you can see, you can be agile. So I think it is that it's what do you start with to get you going so you can build your track, grow your confidence and know what your marketing process looks like. And I think that's massive, you know, definitely. Yeah, and I, and I think you've kind of, Answered a little bit of the question I was going to ask next, which was about the challenges that micro businesses face. You've definitely covered some of them there. And I think that's really important because, like you said, they the, the might not be the expert in these things. But And it kind of runs into another point I was going to make about simplicity as well. I think when you start talking, when you start using the word plans or strategy and words like that, people, and I know I'm guilty of this, automatically think of this all singing, all dancing. You know, when people say business plans, I think they're 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 pages long. Um, and it, it, it doesn't have to be the case. It might be the case, but it doesn't have to be. And actually, mm -hmm. some of the best plans are really, really simple. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe just interesting to know from your experience that like this are the biggest challenges that, that business, small business, micro businesses face when it comes to yeah. their marketing. I think um, there's there's two, certainly, and Michael, that we've come across. And actually, interesting, I was on an event recently with about 20 firms of accountants. And we asked live in the moment, they were all small firms of accountants. You know, we asked in the moment live, the question was kind of what puts you, why haven't you got, we said, have you got a plan? No, <laughs> was the answer. Why? You know, and this just backs up more research that we've done as well. Two things. I don't have the time. <laughs> I'm too busy. I don't have the time. And I don't know where to start. I don't know marketing. You know, I, I, I don't have the knowledge to create a plan. These are the two things that we hear a lot. And I think, you know, we are on a mission to dispel that myth um, and also showcase that it's, you know, how much time do we need? And actually you say about, you know, you say like they, we hear the words marketing plan, marketing strategy. And I've heard so many times where people say, God, I spent two months developing a plan and a strategy, you know, then something happens, I had to rewrite the plan, three months have gone by. And this is not doing, this is not doing the, the value of marketing any good because it doesn't help when we're kind of the ones going, but it's amazing. Um, so I think it's really important to showcase that time, which is a huge factor for small businesses, because usually you've got a lot of plates you're spinning. And then you come in and you just think, what do I do first? You know, and then someone says, do a marketing plan. And you think, you know, <laughs> I've got too much other stuff to do. So I want to show that actually planning can be like brushing your teeth. You know, you do it twice a day for a few minutes. It's amazing how healthy your business can be. You know, want to deal with that issue. And as I said before, we tackling that issue of knowledge, um, you know, through our online solution. But I think those are the two main things we find. Yeah, and I think that the... So I think the time one, actually, one of the things it kind of rolls into, actually, is around consistency when it comes to your marketing activities, should we say, not rather than much you're planning. And I know that's one of the big lessons I've learned over the last few years, how important it is 
to be consistent. And I'd love to know your thoughts on that when it comes to your actual marketing. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is an interesting point because one of the first things I think it's really key to address is what people think marketing is in the first place. Because if we only ever consider it to be some activity, that then immediately presents us all with a lot of more challenges because, you know, but if we see it as a as a process that we need to feed with knowledge, um, being consistent becomes easier because then you can see what you're being consistent with. And I think this is sometimes the key thing, because when you say so, you're absolutely right, though, there is it, that activity element then that outbound messaging, although we're we're actually flagging that that's only one of 12 parts of or 16 um, parts of the marketing process. So I think that immediately shows that it's a bigger deal. And like we said at the very beginning, if you've set out with a vision for your business success, the process that's going to help you is your marketing process. So if we pigeonhole it to be one little element and we only think it's activity, we're not aligning that to the vision we had at the start. So consistency for me is about keeping the process going. Um, and I think if we start then with the basis of, right, who are we, what is our magic, what is our brand, and what do we love and our passion, understand our two elements of community and understand the range of communications available to us and develop our plan based on those four, we're always going to be consistent. And because we know that we're feeding those four areas with knowledge and insights. And that is what will ensure your marketing process is consistent. So I hope that kind of answered your question, but I just wanted to yeah. maybe just tweak it slightly. No, no, it's absolutely fine. Well, um, you're the expert on these things. That's why you do. And uh, it, it's really interesting there because I think what you, what you think marketing is um, mm. or what people think marketing is, what I think marketing is, is, is probably everyone's different. Um, yeah. There's certain things that we do that we might not consider marketing, but it but it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's that's important when it comes to, I was going to ask you about the question around, essentially about budgets and money. You know, for a lot of micro business, their budget for them, and I'll use the word activity, their marketing yeah. activity is, is, it might be nothing or very low. What type of things could they think about to at least get themselves going with marketing that when they can, fingers crossed, be in a position yeah. where they can put some budget to that, they are in a strong position to make that really work. Yeah, absolutely. I think the key thing is to start and put just that short bit of time aside to develop a plan based on those four areas that we've highlighted because you get your right knowledge in those areas and you really drill down and understand those. This is just thinking that's not a cost. And then you can explore various ways that you can reach out, use your communication channels that, again, that present no cost. So, for example, I mean, people question, I know sometimes and say about networking, this and that. I actually think networking is a, a great thing to do. Um, but actually, equally, um, you do that with some degree of a plan and some sort of knowledge and preparation. So, again, your networking needs to fit into your process, but that can be done at low, minimal cost. Um, there's a lot of digital tools out there that don't require money and spend. Um, and I think it also, you know, look at if, there, if you might be a micro business, maybe up to about, say, nine employees, it might be one of you. But consider your voice. Um, who are you speaking to? Who can you, you know, use? Um, I've said about the digital channels, but who can you reach out to yourself? And I just think it's really key to look at what channels you're using, what's available to you at no cost, but what you're fueling that with and what knowledge you're using to fuel that communication. So a lot of this comes down to really being clear on your vision, your values and your purpose. And also not being able to, not being worried, sorry, about refining that. And, and I think, again, confidence plays a big part in this. But I think really the key thing is to get that bit sorted first of all and really work on your messaging and look at those um, opportunities to make use of digital channels that are low cost and no cost. Networking groups where, you know, cost, again, is low, but it gives you a chance to flesh out. And when you're out networking as well, it's not just about what, you, what you've got and what you deliver. Use it as a great research tool <laughs> because that will then fuel your future output. <laughs> so it's a really key thing to have that process nailed to start with. 
because then you do a, a few small bits it's amazing what knowledge you can glean because then you understand and we're big on these two words how and why and that's Absolutely. the key so, i was going to ask you about kind of in your experience like the the, the mistakes that micro businesses often make when it comes around their marketing um, and I, before, I, before I ask you that, though, I was going to also going to mention, because one of the things I notice a lot, uh, and I've done it myself, so it's, it's not, a, not a dig at anyone because I've been as guilty as anyone else, is the kind of short versus long-term stuff in terms of, I think as a small business, especially in your early days, it's really, really e not easy. It's, it's, it's more likely you, you're always trying to get something that, quick wins, a quick win, something that gets something quickly. Um, but and almost forgetting about the long term. But the problem with the short term stuff is then that's all you're ever doing. And it's a it's a um it's yeah. a cycle and that's all you can ever do. You you need to have that a better balance between things that might when you get some quick wins and things that might take a little bit more time, but ultimately will be as if not more beneficial. Uh, and the reason I thought about it then was you, you mentioned networking and you know so I, I would say something like posting on social media, for example, might be a really good and get you some short-term wins. Great. Going networking, you might get some short, short, quick wins, but more likely, actually, it's a longer term, the relationships, the benefits that you get over that. It might be six months, 12 months, 18 months, whatever it might be. So mm -hmm. uh, the, I guess the main question is what mistakes have you seen, but also kind of your thoughts on that and the kind of the balance between kind of quick wins and, and longer term benefits. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good point, um, Michael, to be fair. I think the one that I've seen so many times and people say to me is, oh, I just I put loads of stuff on Facebook and didn't get a thing. Or I put loads of stuff on a platform, not picking on any one platform, by the way, in particular, but I'm only quoting what someone said to me. Um, but people say this, and I think that's where there's the expectation. And I think this is a word that can be a bit dangerous our expectations because we think we're going to just put something out and we think we're going to get that back because this is the cycle we're in of this world of instant and instant is great in many ways for impact perhaps and this and that and but actually the real key bit to all of this is relationships and building relationships but that includes massively the relationship you have with your marketing process and I know I keep going on about it but it's so important because when you have a really love love relationship with your marketing process you you can have that confidence you can maybe look that longer term and I think as well you know it is there are campaigns people will need to do campaigns they may well have something that's coming up and they've got a six week window you know so that's more of a short term thing so we're going to need to change you know we need to work at what communications are putting out, what channels, what messaging. That's not redesigning your plan. That's just looking at specific campaigns that they will slot into your overall process. So I think what you've got to do is it is a fine art between that balance. And I think it's a good word you use there because somehow we've got to be able to manage both of those. But always from everything we do, we take knowledge to fuel our next steps. And having the confidence to know that we may have done something, we might not have got what we thought, but we can go back. We don't go back. We've taken 10 steps forward. We don't take 15 back. We just take a couple back, refine, and we go back again. Everything we do has got to strengthen our next move. So I think we've got to be able to, it is a fine art. It's difficult to answer it now, how people are going to always balance their short and long term. But what I would advise every micro company to do is to have a really solid plan that's built around knowledge and insights because that really does strengthen you and i think when you feel supported it's i always say it's like going to yoga you would go with a yoga mat you wouldn't be on a cold hard floor pressing your joints on it and expecting to feel good <laughs> so it's the same with your marketing be protected and be supported because that's how you will get balance that is how you'll be able to balance out this long and short term because your eyes are always on forward on goal and you've got that support structure around you. Yeah. And obviously you, you use the word insights there. And I think, I think it's really interesting. It, it prompted me, I think a, another thing that people are really tempted to do, you know, with social media being an obvious one, but things like email marketing as well. It, it's really easy to look at the numbers and use that as the only way of drawing conclusions. And whilst it, it should be part of it, I, in, my, in my opinion, but there's other things 
to kind of consider as well. And I, I've used this example, I think, quite a few times on this podcast and uh, to people in person as well. With So we, we, we post regular on Instagram. Now, I don't think in the whole time we've been doing it, I've had a single inquiry directly through Instagram. And the numbers aren't anything spectacular on there or anything like that. However, the number of times I've had conversations with people who have inquired about the Northern Affinity, and within that conversation, it's come up, oh, yeah, when I saw this post on Instagram, people are seeing it. People are yeah. sitting there noticing it. Um, and if I just went purely on the numbers, it probably wouldn't be something I'd focus too much on, if at all. No. But no. I, by having those discussions, and I, and I appreciate different businesses maybe don't speak to the people they're dealing with as much as me. I, maybe I do. Some will do more, I'm sure. Um, but it's probably a good example of just not just taking everything on face value and kind of the wider picture again does that make sense yeah absolutely and i'm a massive fan of saying you know what analytics are great they're there there's all kinds of amazing tools at our disposal to measure those analytics which i think are absolutely essential they're there for a reason we're not here to invent any other kind of analytic in that regard because they they exist but what i am really passionate about is the outcome from time invested by people um, because marketing is driven really by people's input, um, whether that's one of you in a small business or up to 10 of you, say, in a micro business. There's people involved here. Um, and I, I kind of came up with my own little return on investment thing the other week. I've decided I've called it Romty. There you are. You've heard it here. Romty. Which is Yeah, Romty. Uh, <laughs> which is return on marketing time invested. Because I kind of felt, you know what, humans put a lot of effort into marketing, so we need human outcomes that we can track and measure to get how is that, that bigger picture. Um, and this is what we talk around. With, that's why we've set a button. Um, that's why the threads that connect those buttonholes, that's why it's so important. I'm trying to sit the right side of the button. There we are. Um, <laughs> you know, those threads, and by the way, we have threads first, just saying. Our threads are, are business outcomes that people can impact on. It's the use of insights and knowledge that we will drive to achieve those 12 outcomes. We start with the why. We start with the outcomes. An example, you know, for example, one of them is, I'll use this one because it's interesting, referrals and testimonials, right? There you are. That's one of the 12 outcomes we feature in the product that we've got. Otherwise known as word of mouth. <laughs> um, and I love to tackle that one. But you see, how on earth can you, what analytic will ever measure word of mouth? No. It, it, it's... It's never, is it going to happen? I mean, let's wait and see. You never know. Maybe not in my lifetime. Um, but what we want to show, though, is people will put some time in to generate that marketing outcome. That's bigger picture thinking. But it's not that bigger picture. It's very real. It's very daily. It's very regular. So these are all the things that I think we've got to work to, you know. And that's why I think that in terms of those outcomes, measurement and tracking, we really can do, we can compare apples, pears and bananas, you know, because marketing is a massive thing made up of all kinds. There's digital communications, you've said about outreach, networking, but there's print. I love telemarketing, you know, um, there's all kinds of ways. How do you compare so many different things? The only way is to have the same set of 12 business essential outcomes. Love it. I think that's a great place to finish this conversation because um, this actually feels like we could talk about lots of different areas of it, Mags, and I think yeah. uh, you know, might have to become a regular contributor on the podcast. Um, the button needs to be out, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if people want to find out a bit, or whether it's contact you or find more about, you know, more in depth about what the big red button is, where, where, do, they, where do they want to go and look? Okay, best place um, to get cracking with the solution really is to hop over to mymarketingbutton.co.uk. And there is a free version of the solution that is available. So it gives a quarter use of the product. So it's one of the buttonholes and three threads. Uh, we've called it the word of mouth plan because it is actually um, from the client's buttonhole. So it's how you're maximizing your business with your current clients. Um, but you can check out more there, uh, which is a really good place. Or literally it can reach me, um, you know, the email address is on the website or it's mags at redbutton.marketing if anyone would like to have a chat. Perfect. And what I'll do, I'll do, Mags, is I'll put all the details in the show notes, whether we're on YouTube and, and, and the podcast platforms as well, so people can can find it there. And um, for whatever reason they can't see that, please, you know, contact me at Northern Affinity and I'll point you in the right direction. That's that's not a problem. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for 
your knowledge, your experience, your expertise. It's really appreciated. And like I said, I think there's a there's a few more of these conversations we could be having over the, the coming weeks and months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been, do you know, honestly, it's been such a lovely session. I've really enjoyed this discussion. As you can tell, we really do enjoy it and we love it. And it is a, it's a bit of a big thing going on in a business. And we're passionate about that and the people involved. So, you know, absolutely amazing. Always up for a conversation. So thank you, Michael. It's been brilliant. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And thank you, Ags.